Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for the kind introduction. And uh, I just want to say uh, what a, a pleasure and an honor it is to be here in uh, Providence today, which is uh, my hometown. So I'm really pumped to be here. So uh, what I'd like to do uh, this morning is uh, tell you my story. If everybody can see that. Just give me a second here. Everybody can see here. Take long. All right, so here's, here's my family. That's me. Uh, behind me, this was uh, in Providence uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I think everybody probably can, uh, can understand this. This is uh, my wife, Jen, and my wife, Charlie. And uh, this was, uh, she was giving the um, opening speech at uh, her school that day, and there was 1,000 people that were going to be there. And, uh, you know, Charlie came to me, and she told me about it. And, uh, you know, having done this for a living, I was pretty excited to hear her that she'd be doing that. And then, of course, as we started to prepare, my wife had to remind me that my daughter was 13 years old and not a professional speaker. So, uh, you know, we went through that. But the day that uh, actually she was speaking, I woke up in the morning, and uh, unfortunately for me, uh, I knew what uh, laid ahead for me. And basically, it was a minefield uh, of worries, a minefield of worries that I knew uh, would come fast it would come furious, and it would come over something, you know, completely uh, ridiculous. Because my own mental illness, uh, I suffer from OCD, and that's um, obsessive compulsive uh, disorder, for those of you who don't know. Um, I knew that it would try to rob from me what, what I value uh, most in life. And what I value most in life was, was these types of, of moments. So, so picture this, I'm, I'm getting ready in the morning, and it's the first day of high school for my oldest. My uh, fourth grader um, was his first day at a new school. So there is a lot of stress going on in the spar house in this particular morning, okay? And I'm downstairs, and heading downstairs, and my wife says to me, hey, why the heck is the air condition so damn cold in here? So that's the first uh, set off for me because I like it nice and cold, more comfortable. So it, uh, you know, it started bothering me. Now I'm downstairs with my daughter and we're doing a, a dry run because I know it's good to do that the first morning. Get in the car, we're heading to school, we're late. All right, now it's my fault that we're late for everybody's first day. So now, now I got the bad father thing going on. Drop two of the kids off, head back to school, and my wife now is uh, upset with me um, because now I'm asking her for all kinds of assurance because all this stuff is bothering me. Great, we get over here to, uh, to listen to her speak. And here I am, like in one of the greatest moments of my life, getting ready to watch my daughter do this. And I'm OCDing about 14 different things. And I've got a level of anxiety that um, is almost hard to explain. You know, as I travel and speak around the country, people always ask me, they say, Jeff, what's it like? Well, here's what it's like. Uh, picture, if you will, um, you're in the airport, you know, say O'Hare Airport, crowded airport, and you turn around for a moment like this, and then you turn back, and there's no child. Now, I think everybody can understand that, that level of anxiety. For someone like myself, I've got that exact same level of anxiety over something completely ridiculous. And that can go on sometimes for minutes, it can go on for hours, it could go on for days. So that, that's what's happening that morning as I'm watching my, my daughter, who did an incredible job, by the way. She showed up everybody, the headmaster, the other speakers, the chairman of the board. So I was a very proud moment. I had to put that in there. Um, but I didn't come here uh, this morning um, for you to feel bad for me. That wasn't, that's not my thing. Um, this isn't a pity party. Um, what I came here this morning 
was to tell you, if I can, I came here. It's a horseshoe. I came here to tell you I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one of the lucky ones because I got diagnosed uh, with OCD. And for the last 30 years, I've fought a debilitating illness that tries to rob me every single day, even as I'm, I'm standing here in, in front of you uh, today. But one in four people, one in four people in this country, one in four people that are in the audience today suffer from a diagnosable mental illness. Um, I was having dinner with somebody last night, and there were four of us, three at dinner, and I told them they could relax because I had it covered. <laughs> but uh, but the, the number that, that's staggering is two-thirds. Two-thirds of us, two-thirds of us will not get the help that we need or deserve primarily due to stigma. And that's criminal. That's just criminal. So you live with a mental illness. It does, it's not like it goes away. It's something I, that, I, that I live with. But as fate would have it for me, um, about 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, um, I'm coming home from work one day, and I tell people, you can't make this crap up, right? Somebody says to me, hey, Jeff, um, you know, painting might be good for you. So I say, well, you know, when you're desperate, you'll try anything. So I head to the paint store, I pick up all the equipment, I come home, and if you've all seen, you know, Forrest Gump and how he runs. Um, you're looking at the uh, Forrest Gump of painting. All right, I never stopped. I never stopped because it did a bunch of different things for me. You know, the, the first thing is it gave me some sense of control that mental illness robs you of. It also provided me um, some peace of mind, some peace of mind that I was so desperate for in my own, my own life. It also gave me a, a vehicle to, to, to tell people how I felt. You know, I can't, and I'm sure a lot of people here, I can't write it, um, but I can paint it. And, you know, through uh, my own art and titles like Half Daddy, Stop the Madness, Prisoner in My Mind, you know, people were able to connect to my work and I was able to express how I was feeling. And um, it also gave me um, this blank canvas, if you will, a blank canvas for my own creativity. I think that we all know in life, whether it's your business or your personal life, uh, we can't control what goes on sometimes. But when I painted, I was the boss. I was in control. And I found that uh, invigorating uh, to my soul. So as fate again would have it, um, I got to the point in my life, this is maybe five years ago, I was 45, and uh, I was looking uh, to do more with my life, not an uncommon uh, thing. At the time, I was a uh, CEO of a textile company, and I was selling fabric for a living, not exactly changing the world, okay? Uh, I also was a little disheartened, disheartened that I wasn't making the progress that I thought I could make, you know, with, uh, with my, own, uh, my own health. And then at that time, I got hit. I'm going to show you this. I got hit. I got hit by a lightning bolt. Now, not a real lightning bolt. I've been waiting to get hit by that one for my health, like it all go away. Well, I think we all know that ain't gonna happen. But in this case, I got hit by a lightning bolt and it came in the form of the Discovery Channel. The Discovery Channel had found out about my story and they had come to Rhode Island and uh, they were doing a documentary and my wife Jen and I gave them complete access to our family for three days in the hope of, of trying to put a face on mental illness, and uh, you know, the piece aired about maybe three months later, and the first time you, know, you watch that, you hold your breath and you, know, you hope they do a good job. And it was something that I was really proud of, and I hope everybody here might have an opportunity um, you know, to see someday. But I was re-watching it, uh, maybe the second time, the third time. You know, I had almost like this, this out-of-body thing uh, experience. Let me explain. And it came. So I'm watching this thing. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm a loving father. I'm a loving brother, son, empathetic individual, you know, given, 
you know, the personal struggles that I had been through in, in my own life. Okay? And then this, this circle got smaller. I said, you know, I'm someone that um, is a self-taught artist. A self-taught artist, uh, I knew the, the, the power of art firsthand uh, to heal. It got smaller yet, someone that was a, a teacher and a mentor. And believe me, I couldn't imagine in a million years that as a role. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an art therapist, you know, basically I'm a nobody. I'm just a guy that showed up uh, on a children's psychiatric ward one day with a bag over my shoulder uh, with paint supplies and I figured, you know, if it was good for me, you know, uh, maybe it uh, would help somebody else. And I started. That's it. And then as I watched it, I said, there it is. There's that bullseye. Mental illness suffer. You have to live it to know it. And I was living it. And I thought to myself, you know, not despite, but because of my illness, I was on this journey. And I said, maybe, maybe I'm somebody uniquely qualified um, to articulate and communicate a, a message of, of hope and acceptance um, on a very difficult subject that, you know, I don't think we've gotten our hands on yet as a society. About nine years ago, nine years ago, I had painted this symbol right here. And you might recognize it as the combination of two icons, a, a peace symbol and a heart. But for me, it was much more personal. It signified peace of mind and love of my heart, the two things that I was most desperate for in my life. If you, you ask me after, or other people that suffer from mental illness, uh, what gives them peace of mind? You'll be surprised at the answer. It won't be the big things. It'll be the little things that it tries to rip us off of. It's, you know, having a cup of coffee with my wife or throwing a ball around with my boys or reading a book with my, my daughter without all this, this crap and interference, you know, running around uh, in my head. So, it's my dream. It's my dream as I'm here today in my hometown that that symbol right there that you see, and you see on my shirt, and everywhere else I have it, that someday that this symbol will do for mental health and mental illness with the yellow bracelet and my good friends at Livestrong have done for cancer. And I thank each and every one of you for, for believing such a thing is possible because peace love truly is possible because of people like you. I thank you.